Okay, here we're going to talk about FME Server 2012 SP2 and how it takes us to a new era in data distribution and delivery with uh, FME Server. So the first thing is, is um, when we think about the world today, we think about all the applications, we think about uh, you know communication, we think about just about anything in the world. What drives everything today? And that's data. So now the challenge is, given that the world is driven by data, the challenge is now how do organizations get data from, from anywhere? So wherever data is captured, how do they get it to where it needs to be? So that could be data from anywhere to everywhere. Or the flip side is, how do you get data from everywhere to anywhere? OK, so the question is now, but how do you do that? Um, what does SAFE do? As uh, many of you know, we totally focus on moving data. So we don't build the fancy front-end applications. What we do is just we're in the background moving data from wherever it is to wherever it needs to be. Um, our product, FME, our technology, is um, all about unlocking the power of data. In the early days, we I remember we had a... Um, an ad and basically it was a picture of a lock showing FME opening it. Ten years ago we had a poster to celebrate our our 10th anniversary and there it is there. It was all about data is power and again FME enables you to harness that power. Okay, Up until FME 2012 um, it's always been when we come to data movement users would simply just ask for it and we would deliver. Okay, and so so we used to say, you know, put users in the driver's seat, they uh, simply request the data, and then it is delivered right to them so they can get the data to where it needs to be. But the problem was, is that if they didn't ask for data, they didn't get it. So every single time they wanted some data, they would have to, they would have to ask for it or they didn't get it. Okay, and that is that the data moved only when a user of the data kicked it off. So it could be a user going to a website asking for data, um, could be an application which periodically would get updates and the data the, and the data would move. But getting the access to the data was um, w w was a big deal, okay, and um, had to be manually kicked off. Okay, so for example, in data distribution, a user would ask for data, get the data, but the user had no idea where, um, when new data was available. From a data provider standpoint, they would have a historical um, knowledge of where people ask for data, but uh, history isn't always the best way to know where users are going to want data in the future. You know, ideally users would not want to know where users are interested in data now, and then they would work to be able to serve those users the best way they could. Some other capabilities of uh, this traditional FME server workflow. Um, loading and validating data. We have some organizations that have built QAQC services online to support their workers in the field. Working with large volumes of data, of course. Databases are getting bigger and bigger. And in order to uh, work with those large volumes of data, you need to use FME to get it into systems or get it out of systems. Um, applying updates to data, many organizations now will get data update records, and um, FME can work with those. Of course, one of the big things that people use FME Server for now is scheduling tasks. Um, so they might have a bunch of workspaces in their organization. They want to easily automate that by having a scheduled task that will execute workspaces. And again, FME Server enables you to do that. Um, automated workflows. Um, again, this whole ability of with FME Server to have a central place where you put all your workspaces and then you can control when particular workspaces are run. But everything we know about data movement and focus on a new way that FME 2012 SP2 server enables you to move data. Power of notification search services and the subscription model, users will basically subscribe to data and get the data they want as soon as it's available. With FME server 2012 SP2, now the entire workflows can be event driven, okay? And the world of real time. So now 
it's not things aren't done at the time users request them data is moved when the event happens so we're into this real-time data movement so this really enables us to handle lots of different things sensors we can support sensors we can push data when an event happens to all those who want that data and we can perform complex event processing as well okay so in this system there's two types of users there's a data subscriber i.e. that's the person or persons who actually want data so what they do is they basically register for the data they can register for the the type of data they want they can register for the area they're interested in and when that particular type of event in the area they're registered in happens they can get notified they can get notified in a number of different ways email which is amazingly valuable um, in this model twitter sms um, a web app could be a subscriber could be sent to a mobile phone so a subscriber doesn't necessarily have to be a person it could be it could be a system or a device okay similarly in the data reporter how are things reported it could be a sensor generating the report could be an email um, and in fact there's a earthquake service that is one of the first things that's going to happen when an earthquake is detected emails are blasted out why emails emails are well understood and it's easy for users to handle emails as well as um, as systems since it's generated by a machine parsing that email is very very simple okay so obviously data people can report things through email through their sensors through mobile phones through web apps through many different other ways um, to get data into the system so whenever an event happens a user reports it lots of things happen okay the, the subscriber of course he doesn't worry about anything other than he is going to get notified and told when this new data is available he simply registers he says I'm interested in this over here and when it happens he will get um, told okay and then notifications are pushed to him he doesn't have to check for data in the old model when a user wanted updated data the latest data he'd go to a website or go somewhere ask for the latest data and get the latest data now in this new model as soon as it happens the user is going to get the most up-to-date data okay the data reporter his task also is simplified he simply collects the data reports it as it happens so when an event happens a data report happens and the data is automatically disseminated to the people who want it the data reporter doesn't know and really probably doesn't care who is getting it his whole focus is on just simply reporting the data and again this could be a sensor okay okay so how are these alerts automatically sent to subscribers okay that's through you guessed it FME server so imagine the subscriber workflow here's the subscriber interface that we put together okay nice demo app user goes to this URL enters their email address identifies the area of interest that they want to be notified about um, specifies a subscription period um, draws an area on the on the map um, indicates whether they want to be inside or outside um, and that's important um, inside means that any event inside the area will trigger so maybe you know there's an area around your live and obviously you want to know if there's lightning strike within your area outside's interesting for different reasons you might have somebody or some truck or something that you want to be noticed only when it goes outside of a permitted area could indicate a truck being hijacked or or some driver taking it somewhere where he's not supposed to and um, again alerts can be would be generated only when in that case the person or truck went outside their allowed area okay on the reporter side here's another web page that enables users to do is to very interest reporters to do is to very easily generate a, an alert so they would simply go on the map and they would generate <coughs> <laughs> excuse me an event and it would be posted to the server and all the subscribers would would get an email with where that event was and um, and the information all the information about the event okay 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 but wait there's more
Okay, so what we've shown so far is this ability of FME server to send email. Okay, that was there before in 2012. The ability of FME server to, um, you know, interact with web-based interfaces so I can generate an event and register for events on the web. That was there before. In SP2, though, we've added something else. We've added this ability for FME server to accept emails. Okay, so what this enables us to do is now from any mobile device, a user can take a photo, mail it to the topic, okay, and we're not going to get into what topics are, but, but imagine that's being an event type. Every event type could, could be associated with a topic, and this one I have one called photo. If you mail a photo from a geotag device to that email there, that's where the server's um, installed, dawndemo.safe.com. If you take a photo on your smartphone, mail it to there, you will get an email back telling you that this, uh, is the uh, event has been logged. But anybody who's registered in that area, subscriber, will also get an alert saying, hey, there is a photo taken in this area. They're also going to get a map with, with a pinpoint on it. They're also going to need a link to a Google, to the, uh, a Google map showing where it is. They can click on it, see the photos, see all the photos, and things like that. So it's as simple now to just point your camera at something, take, take a photo. Now this is a small thing, but it's a big thing. You can imagine graffiti. You know, you can empower your, the citizens, take pictures of graffiti. You know, the photo itself shows you what the graffiti looks like. It shows you where it is. Okay, you can, yeah, I'm in Vancouver, we had riots, you can imagine people with cameras taking pictures, crime stoppers, whatever, sending them in, you have the photo, you have the time, you have the, uh, you have the, you have the location, very powerful, and very simple, okay, you can imagine crimes, okay, in the past we know there's um, some police departments out there that used to get their crime report every week, for all the crimes that happened in the previous week. Okay, then they automated the system and they went from a where they would used to get it where they could get it every morning for all the crimes the next day. With something like this and this notification system, now what they could do is they could actually get the people in the field notified immediately that the crime is reported. And citizens in fact could take pictures mail them somewhere and then those could be pushed to the workforce in that area to get the notification okay but wait there's more we've added more in SP2 okay we've also created an app okay a data reporter app and what this app enables users to do is on their iPhone is to simply report things directly from their iPhone okay the interface is very simple okay it looks like this okay so you specify the host you're using your login information um, the topic you want to log to in this case it's EMS location update um, then you have some messages okay that you can specify okay very simple and um, so that's sort of the high level message that's the test alert and then the, the message could be whatever you want you can also specify a time interval maybe you want to send this every 10 minutes and you also have a distance filter you may not want to send updates if the person's not moving or only when the person moves so far so it would be every 10 minutes okay and those two are ended together and when they've moved more than this so if a user stay put stays put he's not going to uh, to generate um, any any traffic or any report okay okay so that's that there's a message time interval distance filter and topic selection okay um, there's also a send button there so if you just want to manually send these updates you could do that too so you could go in there in settings and type your message hit send and it wouldn't be repeated it would just be sent when you hit the send button Okay, so there you go. So now with SP2, you're also able to, through an iPhone interface, report events. But wait, there's more. We've also built an iPhone app for the subscriber. So this app um, sends the subscriber, shows the subscriber notifications when an event happens that the subscriber has indicated that they're interested in. So now what the subscriber is able to do is to simply... Um, carry their phone around and whenever anything any event has happened that they've indicated they're interested in a little alert will pop up 
and they will be told about it. Okay, so this just shows um, how that works. Um, on the server, somebody would have set up an Apple push subscription um, associated with the appropriate FME server um, topics to that. And then whenever something is published on the server to one of those topics, the information is pushed directly to the iOS device. So this works on iPod Touch, iPhone, and um, iPad, of course. Okay, so there you go. FME Server 2012 SP2 enables you to get data from anywhere to where anywhere, everywhere to everywhere. So wherever you want data to move, you can do it um, using a number of technologies. And um, that is what FME Server 2012 SP2 is all about. Okay, there's other possibilities, of course. Once you start playing with this, the you know your mind starts to race and there's no end of things you can do okay so there's um you could replace the subscription period with a schedule that would be really nice because then i could have specific times where i'm interested in something rather than the whole um, subscription period you could also have the subscriber area be related to the subscriber position so as the subscriber is moving around you know maybe i'm only interested in restaurants or special deals or something within you know five kilometers of my position okay or I'm only interested in customers who have an emergency within 10 kilometers of my position I'm not interested in anything other than that okay and um, or alerts could also because on the back end you have FME server doing the complex event um, processing the alerts could be anything. They could maybe an alert only happens when a certain number of people of interest get within each other. So maybe you're worried about um, you know the health of your road crew, and when you know a bunch of them get together at a donut shop, you're you know you're concerned about their health or something like that. Could happen. And um, but anyway, the point is is that um, w whatever you can imagine is really uh, if possible. The other thing I want to mention is that I didn't write a single line of back-end code. This entire system was built using FME Server 2012 SP2 and the entire thing is driven by workspaces. And uh, my rule is when I write a workspace is I need to be able to do it in 15 transformers or less because um, Otherwise, in my view, it's getting um, way too complicated to demonstrate um, very, something very, very simple. Okay, so anyway, thank you. If you want to uh, reach out to me, there's my email address. Or for more information, visit our website. Um, and um, remember, I'm going to be doing another movie here in which I actually demonstrate the applications. Thank you.